hello everyone and welcome to a new video in our Tossers series. Now I know it's been some time uh, since we made uh, an updated video version, so a bit of a bumper edition coming up for you. Um, we're going to be talking about first half goals, uh, how I play uh, overs two ahead, what to look for, how to play them, and a look at the overs bot. Uh, so stay tuned for that at the end, how we automate between uh, Trader Sports Alerts and Betfair Bot Manager. So a big welcome to all of our new members and our existing members. Uh, thanks for your support in chat and on my channel. I uh, hope today to show you some sort of techniques that I use and uh, you'll see, you'd have seen those anyway in um, my uh, chat channel, my explanations, but I thought I'd share some with you on a new video. Uh, we've got a new season coming up, hopefully crowds are back and things are going to get back to as bad as normal as we can expect. So here we go then. Uh, one of the first things I always get asked by new members is first half goals do we have a first half goal strategy well the answer is now we do yes so I want to explain to you about how we came around to developing one and what to look for so without further ado let's move on to the GSA console which you all know and most importantly the VEH and VEA alert now we use these because we know from history and from our stats that they are highly goal productive matches this goal that happens in the first five minutes uh, whether it's for away or for home does have an effect on the match and in the past we've previously used it for make goals for looking for uh, two goals in the second half and so on and so forth but we hadn't really developed a first half goal strategy now before you want to comment in the window below and say but you don't have a big enough sample rate this is not big enough you know, you need at least 10,000 samples. Great, if I had 10,000 samples, I would be 634 years old. So I don't have the samples. But what we do have is a history of that league over the last 10 years. So we can see the footprint that it's made from these situations where this early goal has occurred. And that's what we go by. Now I think 10 years is a pretty good benchmark to have. And also this is a fluctuating uh, strat that means if it drops below 50% in that league we won't play it and it might come up again the next season seasons in leagues fluctuate Sweden for example had a great season with masses of goals in the second half then the next year dropped away but there was a long term average so we only play these strats when the average is up so all well and good uh, we have our early goal in the first half uh, so where do we want to trade this? I took this from the goalstatistics.com site and it's a breakdown of first half goal distribution and where they're scored. And it's quite clear to see that the majority of the goals are scored in the last 15 minutes. Um, that's good for one reason. Uh, we know that the odds go out uh, the closer we get to the end of a half. And here it's indicating 31 minutes to half time. So with that in mind, I took uh, what I knew from how we operate in the second half and how we look at around about 50% upwards from 75 minutes. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but what you've got to remember is it's 50% in 15 minutes, not 50% over a whole half. So it's much more condensed. So then I started looking at odds at round about 30 minutes and they fluctuated between 2.3 to 2.7. So I came to the conclusion if I get 2.5, this is great because if we're working on a 50% uh, probability, you've got to understand that at 50%, you might have a losing run of 10 or even more. Uh, that's not actually happened to me yet. Uh, I think in any trade I've ever done, I think seven maybe has been the worst, seven or eight. But on the other hand, uh, each trade you win, you will receive one and a half points for. So how does that work? Well, if you do 10 trades and it does come out at 50%, uh, five of your trades, you would have lost five points and on the others you would have won uh, 7.5 less commission, uh, so you'd be two and a half points up less commission. So this is where you simply have the case of the odds giving you value against the probability. Before I show you the uh, stats tab 
uh, and what we would look for once we'd received the alert. I thought I'd give you an overview of, of how the trade works really. Uh, up the top it's pretty obvious VEH and VEA triggered alerts. Uh, down here is our market and our goal has been scored by the fifth minute. Up the right hand side you'll see the progressive time of the first half erode as will you do on the left hand side see the odds for uh, another goal or over 1.5 first half goal increase. So the information we have at the uh, beginning of the alert uh, and I'll show you that in the stats tab as well, is that an, there is an expected uh, chance of a further first half goal, which is 70%. But we're looking for uh, leagues or certain games that have those later, and that's what GSA tell us uh, on the stats tab. So you remember I said about the condensed area. Uh, we're working in, what, the last 15 minutes here where the, the odds have... Uh, held out and are still going out further. Then remember this is not linear. Uh, odds will steadily go out and then increase in a Bezier style fashion. Um, so going back to this, yes, this last third, as you can see, I call this the goal rich area. This was all of this 70%, but GSA is telling us in this fraction or one third, there's a 50% chance. And here again, the odds have moved out to 2.50. So we're looking at a lot of things in our favour here. A, we know that first half goals are scored more in that area. Uh, GSA is telling us we have a 50% chance in this match and we have odds that are way above 50%. And that is quite simply the over 1.5 first half goal trade set out uh, as a map. So let's go and look, uh, shall we, at the stats tab. On any given day, you'll see uh, a busy GSA console and you'll see the VEH alert. And by going over to the TSS on that match uh, and clicking on it, it will bring that game up. Now you can also uh, come into the stats tab and look at historical games uh, well, if there are no games. Uh, we're gonna look at this Belarus one, which I'm gonna call up in the first division. We know that the score is one nil. Very important to make sure you select the 0-5 uh, duration and the score is 1-0. So let's look at that game at 6 minutes and see what that uh, BEH alert would have told us. Uh, well, it's telling us the chance of another first half goal is 77.27, so that's good. And in the overall match, a 97.73% chance of a further goal and... 86.36% chances will go over 2.5. Uh, that's very high. Uh, this would certainly be a game that I took notice of. But we want to try and find this uh, first half goal in that goal rich area, the last third of the first half. Easy enough to do, you just select 29 and hit find. And it's gonna give us a figure now. Now if this figure is below 50%, we move on from the game. We do not drop below that 50%. Uh, even if it's 49, don't be tempted. Keep keep your strap to a rigid set of rules, uh, and then you won't kick yourself uh, when it doesn't come in. And we check down here now. Uh, over 1.5 first half goals is massive here. 65.52%. That's a real good opportunity. That's very high. Normally, if I see 55, I think, well, that's pretty good. And in this match in particular, which I uh, mentioned on Gold Gypsy Chat, was I said that I was going to drip in from 29 minutes. Great odds, I think 2.6 or 2.7, uh, right up to 4.5. And the goal landed, as you can see here, in uh, plus 40 odd minutes. So all three trades were taken and I dripped half a point uh, and got about one point three points back just for that half a point trade. And I do recommend with this first half goal trade that you drip or you just place a half a point or half a unit trade. You don't have to trade the first half goal. You can use it as a basis for over 2.5. So you might want to just put one point on from 29 minutes and let it run. And if you get a goal in the first half, puts you in a very good position to either trade out, hedge up 
or to take the liability out. The second way you can do it is play the first half goal with the half point, and if it doesn't hit, uh, save your remaining half point, so one point in total, to play the over 2.5 from half time. Many ways to skin a cat. You are the trader, so you will need to decide how you want to play this. And you might want to play it different ways. If you see a high over 2.5 here on the goal plus plus, you think, well, yeah, that's that's a better option for me. But I'm, I want to go in in the first half. I don't want to miss that opportunity. And the odds will obviously plummet if we get the goal in the first half. Good luck with this trade. Uh, it will be a telegram alert. That's, I think it already is. I'm hoping that will become a bot alert soon as well. Um, taking you back to May the 30th here, Frederick Stat v. Jerv in the Norwegian Robus League in the second league. Uh, score at 2-0 at half time that flashed up on the console. I looked at GSA and I saw down here that uh, over 2.5, 91%, very good. Uh, but what attracted me into this trade was the over 3.5 at 67.86. I always look for something that's 90-65. Uh, very rarely I'll go down to 85 if I have a high reading over here on 3.5s, but it must be 65. So I stay within those parameters. Um, you might want to change those with your strategy. However, it's a place that I, like, I feel comfortable with and that I won't trade if, if it's outside of those parameters. So we looked at this game. I decided to break it down further because I want to look at the time of the second goal. And did that have an effect on this uh, over 3.5? So by hitting view matches, uh, I called up the game and I filtered the 2-0 uh, goal into where it was, the 21st to 30th minute. Checking down this side, we can see that 13 from 17 uh, went over 3.5, which is a great figure. That's over 70%. This is the time band. This is a, a great tool as well to you know, define the trade uh, on an even you know, digging deeper on it to see what happened. Now, I will accept on this uh, a sample rate of below 10. And the reason for that is because it's over two goals ahead. So the occurrences are less. What I will accept is a minimum of six from seven, but only in a time band. Must reiterate, only in time bands. Uh, seven from eight, uh, eight from nine, and so forth. Obviously, on this occasion, we've got quite a few examples, but it's over 65%, so it's fine. So I never drop below that. Uh, if you consider that only 48% uh, percent of uh, games have that second half uh, two goal margin, then 70% puts us in a really nice place. But I do allow the sample rate to drop because the occurrences are less uh, for overs to go ahead at 2-0. Um, and I often do that with late goal as well. So... Uh, but beyond that, you should always use a sample rate of 10 if you're going for one goal or 90% or 85% at the very minimum. So looking good for this trade. So I have one final check for this trade, and that's going to be my entry point for the over 3.5. So I'm looking across the time bands in this situation. Uh, where we're 2-0 at half time. We've had the two early goals. And I can see here in the first what, 20 minutes that 7 of the 17 have had a goal. So I'm quite happy to wait. The odds are 1.5 at 8. At half time, 1.85 at half time uh, for over 3.5. So the market obviously expecting goals. Uh, had a goal gone in before 60, where I was intending to enter the trade. Fine, move on to the next one or check this trade possibly with that goal to see if there's an opportunity for a late goal. So you always want to be looking, uh, as well as the time bands here in the half time and the opportunity of goals, you need to be looking at where those occur because GSA does give you that footprint as well. And obviously, if we came in here at 1.85, you know, it's, it's not a, a, a bad price, but uh, it's not somewhere I like to operate. Uh, so I'm always happy to wait uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, and on this occasion, I was able to start dripping my trade from about 2.40 uh, right up to, I think, 3.5, uh, which I'll come to in our next slide. So always be sure to check... Uh, the clustering of goals uh, in these uh, footprints of uh, score lines. Uh, I'm now going to show you how I approached that uh, game uh, with the strategy and what I did and what the end result was. So here we are looking at uh, 
the over 3.5 trade in a similar fashion as we did the 1.5 first half goals, except on this occasion we are not entering the trade until the 60th minute as we've checked on GSA stats tab and we're seeing where the majority of the goals occur. Uh, in this instance I've drawn uh, an outward uh, triangle for the over 3.5 trade to uh, show dripping dripping in from 60 minutes to 75 half a unit or half a point on over 3.5 uh, with the knowledge that we have 66% or greater chance of a goal even though uh, we've gone through the 60 minute mark. Uh, here we have G plus 90 which is going back to remember the whole of the second half remembering that we still uh, according to the stats tab had a 90% chance of one goal. Uh, at the point 75 minutes here I will stop the trade on over 3.5 and then I will look to do a trade on over 2.5 had there been no goal. If there had been a goal here uh, on the over 3.5 I would just let that half point run uh, and I did take an average of uh, average odds of over 3.0 so it would have been worth one point. So there is an alternative to this as well. Uh, but we'll play this one for now. So at this point, 75 minutes, no goal. Now we enter this kind of uh, danger area called the hole, where if you don't get your over 2.5 uh, trade in and a goal goes in, you might well lose this one. You always, it's, it's, it's like an insurance, really. So I entered uh, after the score remaining 2 0, about 77 minutes, I was able to enter over 2.5 in this area for about 2.2, uh, 2.3, uh, 2 or maybe 2.4, I'm not sure, but it, it was a good price. So then I have uh, both over 3.5 and over 2.5 in play, and don't forget these are not uh, in line with the over 2.5 prices, they refer to over 3.5, so you always want to be making sure you get enough on your over 2.5 to cover the half unit bet on over 3.5. So you enter this area, and we got two late goals giving us the double and that's it that's that's the way i play the trade if i get a goal here uh, i will let the over 3.5 run if i don't have a goal i will go for the insurance trade here on over 2.5 covering my first bet and we move into the uh, late goal area hoping for one goal at least uh, two uh, save the trade possibly of a small profit or to get the uh, jackpot which is two late goals and that's it that's how to play the over 3.5 and don't forget you can look at 1-1 one, one. Uh, you can even look at 2-1-1-2 uh, one, one, and look to see if over 4.5 does the same cover what would have happened if there had been a goal sort of a minute or two minutes maybe after uh, we'd put our first trade down on the over 3.5 here you can do a thing called a wide filter check or a late goal check um, and you can do it from 79 or 75 so if you're looking at that half point thinking well I've got some good green on this um, what's the chances realistically of me of getting that goal now this has sort of gone 3-0 or if it's gone 2-1 uh, so you just run the uh, opening score time, uh, the score in the match now, whether it's 3-0, 2-1, and 79. And in this case, we can see there was, uh, based on 26 examples, a 46% chance of another goal. For us, it didn't really matter because we already had the saving trade uh, paid for this one, so it's just easy to let it run. But if you want to hedge up or take the green, uh, then look at this figure and I would say anything 45 and above is okay to let it run uh, 50 and above definitely if you're seeing something that's below 40 then consider removing the liability for a free bet or just take the green so there you go this is the wide filter check it should not be used to find late goals uh, because it takes a very generic look at the match doesn't really use time bands and if you're thinking great 50% down here a lot of time it will catch you out you need those time bands and that information uh, before you start looking down here for another goal so just remember that only use it as a secondary filter to decide what you want to do with your existing trade
All right, moving on to the final part of our video now, we're going to be looking at uh, TOS Trade on Sports Automation and what it is. Uh, Trade on Sports Automation basically is the alerts that we receive on trades uh, that go to Telegram are also sent to a BF bot manager if you have one. Uh, for our Platinum members, when you log in, you'll see uh, down here now Bet Automation and there is a free trial available also for BF Bot Manager. And up here we have Automation Beta. Now Automation Beta is uh, a guide to how to install BF Bot Manager, run it. And also there's a PDF that Steve inspired, which is excellent. It's uh, very straightforward to follow and you should be up and running in no time. When we go uh, into Bet Automation, we are presented with a page like this, which is uh, My Football Automation, and there is tennis as well as football. And as you can see uh, from the wording, there are 10 custom strategies that you can build based on the core alerts from Trade on Sports. Uh, the core alerts being uh, overs, unders, and uh, so on and so forth. So today I'm going to show you an alert that I play, uh, and then I'm going to show you how that works in BF bot. It's the very early home alert and I've configured this uh, for my own personal settings. So we know that BEH alerts are <clears throat> differing in numerical size. Sometimes it will be a G plus of 80 and a G plus plus of 50 or it might be G plus of 100 and a G plus plus of 80. Uh, so I set my levels for the alert to be uh, a minimum G plus of 90 and a minimum G++ of 70, <clears throat> a sample size minimum of 10, and the market I want it to be sent to in BF Bot Manager is the over under plus two ahead. So that means VEH uh, one nil, it will look to place a bet in the over 2.5 market. As you see there, overs and as a back bet. So just save that strategy and then that is in play. What will happen is uh, if an alert goes off, uh, it will be polled through the automation and then will be sent to your BF bot manager. Now this is quite interesting. I've woken up this morning and we have a VEH trade that's been played and in fact won. So um, I'm going to open that up now and show you what's happened. Uh, it's placed a back bet in the market of 1.92, which is what I asked for. And two goals have been scored before my hedging has had to come into play. Looking down here, and, and don't ignore the ignore these figures because they do change when you reset your bot or you have a problem or something. They're not accurate. This is why I always keep a separate uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, that's a very important thing to do to see how each strat performs. I do it on a monthly basis. So let's go down and take a look at a uh, center uh, in on this for you the very early home. So the first thing to look at is the actual structure of the strap. Well, it's called very early home. And if you remember here, um, to show you the automation, it has uh, that name there. Okay. So when I set up the bot, um, there are certain conditions I need to apply to it. Uh, basically, Trade on Sports will have sent now this alert to the bot and it will be looking at the game, uh, seeing if the selection and market conditions that I have requested can be fulfilled. And that's fully automated. So market conditions for me on this bot are bet on matches uh, where the time range is 0 to 46. So what I'm saying to the bot is I don't want to play this trade if overs hasn't reached a certain price by 46 minutes, which is the first minute of the second half. Uh, only if live score data is available for the event will I do that because we need to know the score. So the bot needs to know whether it's going to hedge up or, or carry on. Obviously, allow betting when the current score is 1-0. Uh, only on football and start betting during in play after 10 minutes. It's very unlikely that the price I'm asking for is going to reach that in the first 10 minutes. So just a standard rule. And you can uh, edit these like this uh, up here if you want to change the minute time in the match. And uh, if you want to add sports as well. Selection conditions, uh, just the one bet per match. And here my back price I'm asking to enter the trade on is a minimum of 1.92 and a default of 10. 
Once that alert is received, uh, BF Bot Manager will look at that market and keep talking to that market until it finds that price. If a goal goes in, it will shut the market down and not trade it before 1.92. The max ratio between back and low prices, just if you know liquidity in the market for, for that matter, then it won't place a bet if there's big gaps in the market. Price settings, uh, standard generic, I play £50 a point on BEH. And what's important here is you must make sure that the name of the strap on TOS here is the same on the bot. Uh, otherwise, it will not know to recognize that alert. After bet rules, this is quite interesting. And of course, uh, the menu is editable again here in the folder. So what I do with a very early home is uh, I ask the hedge if possible to win 52% on the trade or to uh, minimize my loss and hedge out for a red of 66% across the board. So how does that work? Well, we have a 1-0 scoreline and the price has been matched at 1.92. And what's going to happen is then uh, the bot will continue to monitor the match. Now, if a goal goes in, probably in the first half uh, and makes it 1-1, 2-0. It's going to look at the overs price and if it's dropped to below a point where it can hedge up for a profit of 52%, it's going to do that. If not, it's going to stay in the game. But of course, I will have a lot longer in the match now uh, because I'm only needing one goal. Uh, from experience, what I found is if I, if I put a back bet in at 1.92, I'm in there till about 65 to 67 minutes uh, before I need a goal. If I don't get a goal and it's still 1-0, it will hedge for a loss. If I do get the goal and it can't make the 52% price, it will run to probably about 85, 87 minutes uh, before it hedges up for a loss. So depending on what happens in the game at what time will, will depend on how long your bot runs for and what it does. And you can see that here. And what I'm showing you here is a footprint of uh, since the 19th, 19th of June, yeah, so since the 19th of June, right down to here from last night's game in Chile, which is the 30th of July, so about six weeks it's been running for. It's been very quiet. As you can see, the bot is telling us uh, from all the trades that it's done, it's had a 52.94% strike rate with a profit uh, of 1.3 points. So very quiet time for the bot. Um, what's important you'll notice in here is it's telling you if it's hedge for profit or it's hedge for a loss hedge for profit so if you if you add up all the hedging for losses one two three four five six now six of those if you imagine each one saves you a third of a point um, the bots kind of saves ourselves two points in, in games that might not have gone over 2.5 alternatively as well it's hedged up on games that might have made a full profit i prefer to play it like this i think it's a very consistent strat very stable doesn't go into huge regression, doesn't go into masses of profit, has good runs for sure. But it's always a balanced uh, trade-off between taking 50% green and 66% red. I find it to be a reliable strat and uh, not to give me too much trouble. And that just runs in the background all the time based on the alert uh, when it comes out of trade on sports. And uh, it really does take the emotion out of it, you know. Um, you as a trader will, if you're using BFBot, will decide what you want to do. You might want G plus alerts that are lower or, or higher. Or you might want to go in at a lower price or a higher price. That is entirely up to you. What I'm doing here is I'm just showing the entire workflow from the Trade on Sport alert, how I edit it to my preferences, uh, how it travels then to the bot, and how this is fired into the market. And there you go. So guys, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or give us a like. And also, if you'd like to know more uh, about Trade on Sports, you can look at their website, tradeonsports.co.uk or visit mine, goldgypsy.com. Uh, we'll be back later in the season with some new videos. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if something is wrong or you don't get something or, or you need help, then uh, we at Trade on Sports are here to do that for you. We're a very friendly bunch and you'll find us in all the chat rooms most days. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.